Good morning and welcome to our Eucharist celebration. If anyone is joining us for the first time or visiting, we welcome you. We remind you that if your children need to use the restroom, they should be accompanied by an adult. Before starting our celebration, please let us remove anything and all things that will distract us or others around us. Please turn off all cell phones and other electronic devices. Today, August 4th, 2024, eight, we celebrate 18th Sunday in order in time. Last week, John's Gospel gave us an instance of one of Jesus' multiplications of loaves and fishes. Today, Jesus tells the people who had, fed, who had been fed that he has an even better food for them, himself. St. Paul insists on our being renewed in the spirit of our minds. He himself experienced a deeply dramatic episode of conversation to Jesus. We give thanks for our renewal and conversation as we stand before our merciful God. Now I invite you to stand and turn towards the center to receive the Father Ernesto who is going to preside. of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. Welcome, brothers and sisters, to this celebration this morning that the Lord has given us. Today we are offering this Mass for the eternal rest of Francisco Galvan, El Pidio Chavez. To celebrate these sacred mysteries in a little moment of silence, we ask God for forgiveness for our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words. You have done what I failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grateful fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Virgin, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what has created and keep saying what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated. Being a slave does not make sense, no matter how well you are fed. Former slaves on a journey to a homeland are given what they may call food for the journey. We are likewise on the way to our homeland and are being given proper food. Reading from the book of Exodus. The whole Israelite committee grumbled against Moses and Aaron. Israelites said to, to them, Would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. But you had to lead us into this desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day, the people are to go out and gather a daily portion. Thus, I will test them to whether they follow my instructions or not. I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, in the evening twilight, you shall eat flesh, and in the morning, you shall have your fill of bread, so that you may not, so you may know that I the Lord am your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning, a dew lay all about the camp. And when the dew ex evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like hoarfrost on the ground. On seeing it, the Israelites asked one another, what is this? For they, for they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, this is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord.
Conversion is our fundamental experience as Christians. Our God is constantly remaking us, provided we allow for this remaking. Self-centered ways of looking at life give way to glimpses of a kingdom characterized, characterized by peace, which outshines our focus on self. reading from the letter of St. Paul to Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I declare and testify in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do. In the fidelity of their minds, this is not how you learn Christ. Assuming that you have heard of him or were taught in him, as truth is in Jesus, that you should put away the old self of your former way of life, corrupted through deceitful desires, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds. And to put on the new self, created in the God's way, in righteousness, holiness of truth. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I said to you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father God has set his seal. So they said to him, what can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God that you believe in the one he sent. So they, so they said to him, 
What sign can, we, can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, and as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, Amen, I said to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. The first thing I want to share with you is a little bit interesting, funny, but very telling. And if we remember uh, last Sunday's gospel, when Jesus uh, multiplied the loaves, the fishes, and everybody ate, so they wanted to make him a king. And then you remember what Jesus did? He ran away. He hid. He went. And today's gospel, we heard that they found him. So the first thing, and it's very telling and funny at the same time, is that, and maybe we have experienced it, uh, that we pray and pray and we ask God, please this, please that, and uh, we come to Mass and then we feel that Jesus, that God doesn't listen to us, that God is not even close to us. And the answer is that precisely God hides, God runs away from us, from our prayers, when we are praying, asking Him something that is not for His glory. And it's interesting how they were willing to proclaim Him King, willing for Him to be their Messiah, their Savior. But Jesus had different plans. Jesus had a different way of saving them, saving all of us. And so he ran away. He hid from them. And the same with us. The same with our prayers. And I do believe that many of our prayers are, are lacking one thing. And what's that thing that most of our prayers many times are, is, are lacking? And is uh, what Jesus did on the garden after the Last Supper. After the Last Supper, Jesus went to the garden. He prayed. He asked his father, Father, please take away from me this chalice, this suffering. Please. And he was even sweating blood. But then Jesus said, and I hope that many of you will remember what Jesus said. But that it won't be what I want, but what you will, what you want, what is good according to you, Father. And I think that those are the words that many, in many of our prayers, especially at the end of our prayers, is missing. Yes, God, I need this. Yes, God, you know, my mom is sick. Oh, God, I lost my mom. Oh, I lost my job. Please help me, but... Do it according to your will, not to my will. Of course, those words are, are a sign of humility, to be humble in front of God. But many times, of course, we seem that many times we demand from God. Oh, I come to Mass every Sunday, so God owns me. Oh, I put money on the basket, so now God needs to pay me back. And... You know, he, he needs to get rid of my neighbor. I don't like him. And that's why I go to Mass. And that's why I pray, of course. God will run away. Of course, God will hide from those prayers, those petitions, because are not for the 
glory of God, ye are not according to His will. So, I know it's a little bit funny how God is hiding from me, running away from me, but it's true. God won't do only the things that we ask from Him just because we ask, just because we pray, just because we put some money on the basket. No. God has His only plan. And we see in Jesus, on the eyes of the world, He was a failure. He died on the cross. They mocked Him on the cross. But then Jesus on the cross said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Totally trusting in His Father. Totally trusting in His love. And then, after three days, God resurrected Him. So on the eyes of the world, maybe our, uh, our prayers, our lives, you know, are useless. But on the, the eyes of God, you know, He has something else for us. He has better plans for us. And we cannot see them. So uh, now the other part of today's gospel, we continue, as I was mentioning last uh, Sunday, these six weeks on which we were going to reflect about the Eucharist, the bread of life, Jesus being, as we heard in today's gospel, the bread of life. The one who comes to him, the ones who believes in him, will never hunger, will never thirst. But we need to be very clear that Jesus is not talking about hunger of the body, thirst of the body. He is talking about hunger and thirst of the spirit because as we said i don't know if last week but many times i have said you know jesus multiplied the bread the fish and today they are looking for him because now they want pozole and then next time they will like to have carne asada or fried chicken you know feed us feed us but jesus didn't come to feed our stomachs because we will be very demanding, you know, especially if there are some vegetarians around also, you know, no meat. <laughs> no, Jesus didn't come to feed to, you know, satisfy our stomachs. He came to satisfy the hungers of our spirits, the hungers of our souls. And there is a big phrase, beautiful phrase from St. Augustine. He said, Father, you created us for you and our hearts will never rest until they will rest in you and he experienced that when he was young and strong and he believed that he could do everything and have everything but then thanks to the prayers of his mom you remember the mom of san agustin saint monica after 34 years of praying, then he, St. Augustine, finally found out and realized that no pleasure, no money, no power in this world will give him peace. Nothing in this world will quench, will take away those hungers, those thirsts that he was experiencing for many years. And he did it all. On the wrong way, on the wrong side. He, he went through everything. But at the end, he was still feeling empty. Lost. And that's why, you know, sometimes when I talk to people and they say, Oh, since that we haven't learned. Because we already have so many saints who have gone through that. But then we human beings are still that we know better than God, better than the saints, better than the tradition of the church. Of course, now we live in the world in which the wisdom of the human being is based on a TikTok of 20 seconds, right? I watch a TikTok and now I know everything and nobody can tell me anything and uh, the opposite because I know the truth. Yeah, but they haven't read a book, they haven't uh, heard a conference or a talk, nothing, only a, a TikTok, and now they know the truth. No. They know nothing. Nothing. So going back to this phrase of St. Augustine, 
God created us for him and we are not going to find never find rest peace until we rest until we find until we go and believe in him and also we find in the in, on the scriptures you know I have three examples the first words that Jesus said when he began his ministry were repent and believe in the gospel so Jesus in the beginning invited us to repent to accept to recognize that we need his forgiveness that we need his presence in our lives then moving forward on the transfiguration on the mountain after Moses and Elijah appeared to Jesus the prophets the law Jesus being the uh, fulfillment of the law and the prophets then the father uh, appears and tells the three disciples listen to him and that's what Jesus tells us in today's gospel at the end anyone who comes to him will never hunger everyone who listens to believes in him will never hunger who listens to him and the last one is when Jesus was on the cross when they were mocking him when they were killing him when he was suffering the most what were the first words of Jesus father forgive them because they do not know what they are doing and it is in the deep forgiveness forgiving of our sins when we are forgiven by God that we find peace that we, and of course, no, we, when Jesus takes away all those thirsts, all those hungers that the world is all the time inviting us to be hunger or thirst for, when we find forgiveness, when we find ourselves being loved by God, then we don't need so many things. Um, I was talking to uh, some friends yesterday, and we were in some way joking about how long does it take a woman to go to a store and buy a thing and then get out? <laughs> Couple of hours, right? How many, many of us just think about, you know, you go to a store, you go to a place and you need to buy this, you need to buy that, you need to this. Why? Your closet is full already. We only use less than 20% of our clothes, but still we need to buy, we need to have, we need to do. Why? Because we still believe in, following, and looking for the things that the world is offering us. So during this week, let us reflect and think what I'm hungering for, what I'm thirsting for. I'm looking for more material things, I'm looking for more praises and clapping, or am I just looking to be loved, to be forgiven by God? And remember, when we are forgiven, how many people, they come to confession and then they finally, you know, get it. When we come humbly, when we ask for forgiveness, when we experience God's love and forgiveness, many things dissipate, many things are useless, many things we don't need anymore. Why? Because now God is in our hearts, in our souls, in our lives. Amen. Please stand. Together we proclaim our faith. I believe in one, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one, Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. Father, before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from God. He got the Lord name, consulted with the Father, were made for us for our salvation.
he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnated of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified and upon his spine. Sit at the right hand of the Father. He will come and get in order to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. Holy Catherine and Apostolic Church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And now we present our conditions to God, our Father. We know our world is weighted down by our impulses toward attacking people, and we want to see your image in each person. So we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Pray, pray. We do not know the inner conflicts of people who find themselves alienated from their own identity, but we trust in your understanding, and so we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We know the people of God, the church, and we know our ongoing need for reform and for reimagining how to her herald your kingdom, and so we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We do not know all the steps of another's pursuit of the call to holiness, but we trust in the grace you give us to each of us to become truly ourselves, even in marriage or ordained or a religious life. And so we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. We know the various ways in which we are tempted, and we know peace when we, when with your help we receive temptation, and so we pray. Lord, hear our prayers. For the resurrection of all who have died, especially for those who have died recently and for all those who have anniversaries occur at this time, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We are praying in this Mass for the eternal rest of Francisco Galvan Epidio Chavez. We pray to the Lord. In a little moment of silence, we present to our Lord our own personal petitions and prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear and we present all these our prayers and needs in the hands of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, your mighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our dear and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal by uh, to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering cancel out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and made them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a previous sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for, for consecration, so that they may become the body and blood of your, Son, our, of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose commands we celebrate these sacred mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wonderful resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward for his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will 
to, con to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Philip Neri, and with all the saints at whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, and all the bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you and are passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Together we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer to one another sign of Christ's peace.
Brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. May the body and blood of Jesus Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
we're going to pray the act of the spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the old. I love you about all things and I desire to receive into my soul since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy own Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Invito al Padre Reinaldo. Se pasa. Sí. De aquel lado, Padre también. So he's going to share with us some words, uh, could be in Spanish, and then I will uh, translate for you. Padre. Buenos días para todos. Quiero expresar mi agradecimiento a toda la comunidad parroquial San Felipe Neri eh, por este tiempo, esta estadía de cuatro semanas compartiendo con ustedes. Ya llega a su fin esta estadía por este año, 2024. Ya tenemos que retornarnos a nuestra misión en la parroquia Nuestra Señora de las Mercedes. Desde allí estaremos orando por ustedes. Ustedes oren por nosotros, ya que el próximo mes es la fiesta. Ella es la patrona de nuestro país, de República Dominicana. Y pues con mucho amor siempre venimos aquí a agradecer también todo el cariño y la acogida de parte de ustedes, de nuestros sacerdotes también. Padre Ernesto y Padre Sergio, los diáconos de todos los servidores de la parroquia que siempre nos acogen con cariño. Eh, el pequeño aporte que podemos hacer ¿verdad? con nuestro servicio y nuestra presencia eh, siempre lo hacemos con el mayor amor y disposición posible. Estarán disponibles en nuestra oficina las pláticas, así que el que desee verlas en YouTube o si quiere tenerla, proporcionar su dirección de correo electrónico, Eh, también estarán allí disponibles. Así que gracias a todos. Dios le bendiga y esperamos vernos en una próxima oportunidad. Gracias, Padre. Le damos un aplauso. So, Padre Rey has been with us the last four weeks. Uh, he's from the Dominican Republic, uh, República Dominicana. So, uh, he's leaving Tuesday. God willing, he's going back to his parish, very busy parish. I think sometimes he does seven masses on a Sunday, you know? So, and yeah, that is very humid, very hot and everything. So, um, so and uh, he's a very good priest. So, um, he also mentioned that the ones who couldn't attend the talks uh, are on YouTube or also you can go to the uh, rectory office, give your email and you c we can send to you the uh, talks that he gave to us last week. Uh, and also, again, the invitation is to pray for vocations, to pray for uh, men who hopefully would like to become priests, or women who hopefully would like to become uh, uh, religious. Uh, we, we need a lot of uh, men and women who really will, uh, would like to join, you know, uh, being a priest or being a religious, because there is a huge huge need of young men and women. Again, if you want to become an influencer or YouTuber, your career will be no, no more than three months, okay? So uh, don't even start that 
that career because as soon as your creativity uh, fades away, that's it, no more, right? So uh, hopefully, and also in our families, let us pray that many of your children would like to become priests uh, or religious. Another announcement, again, um, please, if you receive a phone call, email, a request in my name, saying, Father Ernesto is in the hospital, he needs $5,000, and if you sell me the $5,000 in half an hour, I will return to you $7,000. Are you going to send the money? No, right? So don't believe. And then if you really uh, think that I am sick of other... Sergio had an accident or I mean they invent all these crazy things call us or come say our oh, father is okay everything is okay but at the end you know uh, all those are big big lies and they are just trying to get money from you so please please don't believe anything uh, when you receive those kind of phone calls emails messages so uh, don't believe them also, outside is the Guadalupanas. They are selling these tickets for the um, Tardiada y Comida a Beneficio de la Procesión Guadalupana. It's going to be August uh, Saturday 24. Um, they are selling these tickets to help for the procession or Lady of Guadalupe on, um, on December, I guess, I think. And uh, so please support them. Uh, then I don't have the dates, but uh, in my mind now, uh, but we also are going to receive the uh, image of Radio Guadalupe and San Juan Diego, the ones who are going, you know, uh, from parish to parish. So uh, we're going to be blessed with the presence, but uh, they are outside the Guadalupanas. Hopefully you will be able to uh, help them buying these tickets. Okay. Other announcements. Next Saturday, uh, we are going to have uh, our Adoración Nocturna, we begin after the 7 p.m. Mass until the following day, Sunday, with the 8 a.m. Mass, so hopefully more of our parishioners uh, will come and join us with the Adoración Nocturna. Also, God willing, on the first Friday of September, Friday 6 of September, 7 p.m. at the library, we are going to begin uh, with our youth uh, Young Adults Group um, is from uh, ages 18 to 30. Um, but now if you already have uh, two children here, one there and one over there, or if you are living with someone, uh, it's not for you, this group, okay? Uh, this group of young adults is for uh, men and women 18 to 30 who don't have any commitment, any responsibility, uh, any, you know, if you already have children or if you are living with somebody, there are other groups where you, that you can join, okay? But this, this is not for you if you already have uh, some commitments, okay? Hopefully you are being responsible, right? <laughs> now, uh, and once again, St. Philip Neri School uh, is now enrolling from TK to 8th grade. Outside they have a table, our parochial school. Uh, classes will start August 28th, so hopefully you will join, you will register your children with us. If you qualify, there is a help, financial help, uh, up to 50%. And if you have questions, if you want more information, uh, one of our teachers, I think it's Ms. Jackson, is outside there uh, on the table, so for any questions, anything you would like to ask. And um, so they are there outside. Pretty good. Anyone celebrating your birthday during these days, this week, please raise your hand, decide. We have one, two, three, four. So we give them a round of applause. <laughs> Any couple celebrating your uh, wedding anniversary in the Catholic Church that you would like to come up here to be blessed? Come up. We have two couples. Okay. Name? Deborah. 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 Ernesto. Ernesto. Oh, Tocayo, man, nomás. Good. How many years? 23. No, we've been together 23. 
23 together in the church? 10. Okay. How many children? Five. Five. Okay. Two, two dogs. <laughs> uh, any grandchildren? Six. Okay. Good. Pretty good. Congratulations. Okay. So, 10. Okay. Name? Ben. Ben. Liz. How many years? 25. 25. Okay. So, what is the party? <laughs> no fiesta? No 25? Okay. How many children? Three. Three. Any grandchildren? Not yet. Not yet. Only perros, only dogs. Okay, okay. Hold your hands with your wife, with your husband. Okay. We put our hands, oh, look to each other, a los ojos, el que parpadee pierde. So we uh, put your hands towards them. We ask our Lord to bless you, to be with you, to protect you, to renew the promises, to love each other, to respect. Also, we ask our Blessed Mother to guide, to protect, to be with your children, with your grandchildren, whatever they may be. And we ask our Lord to bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. A little bit of holy water. Pérese, todavía no beso. Cálmese. Okay. Le da su rosita y le da su beso. Ahora sí. Congratulations. Uh, any family brought a child to be presented today? Anyone? No? Okay. Uh, once again, if you park on the streets, especially, I mean, this mass is a small. Uh, if you park in the, uh, on the streets, please be sure to lock your cards, not to leave anything, uh, you know, that they can, uh, that people can be tempted to break your window. So, uh, in other words, please hide your Louis Vuitton purse, yeah, with five dollars inside. Hide them, okay? Uh, then if anything happens to your car, I'm really asking our community, please, please call the sheriffs. Please make a report. I know, oh, they never come, or they will come after 10 hours. I don't have time. But at least, you know, call them. Call them. Because if we don't call them, we don't make a report, you know, things may just escalate and continue and continue. Uh, I already talked to them. They said they will send more uh, Police cars here, I, I haven't seen them, but anyway, but the invitation is uh, lock your cars well, uh, don't leave anything there uh, on the side, and if anything happens, please, please make a report, call them, if we go, because if we don't call them, at least call them, you know, say, oh, but nobody call us, we don't know that anything is going on there. No. Yes, uh, I told you, they already stole two cars from the 8 a.m. mass. Okay, so, and then we know, you know, to get a car, to pay, and then they just take it. So please, please uh, do that, okay? Please stand. The Lord be with you. May your Mary God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and our brothers and sisters. Have a wonderful week.